Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the Earth Show. Hello, Marcin, my co-host. How, how is it doing? Hello, Roland. Hello, everyone. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm very excited to the next episode of the Earth Show. Absolutely. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is just uh, the second episode of the Earth Show. So we started two weeks ago, um, Marcin and myself. My name is Roland. Um, I'm an Austrian born, but I'm, I'm also say I'm a traveler. I travel all the time. And that's the reason why we do this Earth Show, because I saw so many beautiful spots, but I saw also some spots that has some opportunity to get cleaner or better or changed. And right now I'm broadcasting from my motorhome. I'm in Spain right now, a little bit outside of the beautiful city of Valencia. And my dear friend Marcin, co-host, where are you based now? Yeah, I'm located in Europe as well, in the middle of it. Uh, as I recently moved out of Warsaw in Poland, I'm living in a country, so I'm broadcasting now from the fantastic nature uh, that is around me. Yeah. Very, very good. So for those guys of you who, who join us for the first time, my dear friend Sin, uh, he, has a, he has a degree in biology. He also has, a, he was studying uh, environments. So he has a lot of background on that. Uh, myself, I was starting business. And by, by environment, yeah, because our, I respect Mother Earth like my own mother, because Mother Earth is nourishing us, is giving us so much, giving us food, air, whatever we need. Um, and in return for that, like, I think she she really, uh, yeah, she really uh, is, 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 how to say, uh, has to be loved like our own mother. Uh, Body mama, how they, how they say in in in, in Bharat in Sanskrit, or Panchamam in South America. So the show for today uh, at USA Global TV and Radio, the Earth Show, is a topic about what can we do. So uh, actually, Marcin and myself, we are not finger pointing with you in the show and said, okay, you have to do this or do that, so it's bad. No, uh, for this show, we want to come as a role model and tell you guys what we are doing on a day basis. It's all about uh, starting with yourself, starting with self responsibility, small things. And when everybody does a little bit, I mean, we are over 8 billion people in the world, when everybody does a little bit, then this place would be a much better one or more beautiful one. Well, what do you think, Masim? Yeah, I think it's also very important to say that uh, we will not be playing saints here so we will not be like you know role models from instagram and everywhere just greenwashing uh, what we do every day uh, the plan for today's uh, episode is actually us and feeling um pictures of our daily basis uh, right so uh, you will show you will see some garbage you will see some uh, nasty things and uh, yeah, it's just uh, true and authentic. So we want to share how we understand caring and respecting of Mother Earth. And maybe, just maybe, you will find uh, some inspiration here and we'll be able to um, maybe make some changes in your life as well. Absolutely. And we structured uh, the show today. We have uh, three main topics for today. What can we do? The first is we will talk about how we take care about garbage how well, what we are doing on a daily basis uh is one thing we talk about garbage about cleaning the second topic is about energy uh, uh, what alternative energy do we, we do use how we save energy how we live in energy and the last but not least the third topic for the day is food because we know that food has a, a tremendous impact on on the environment uh, and, and respecting mother. So these are the three topics. Okay, let's bring up the slides and then we we start. We, we meaning with the slide. What I mean with the slides is we don't we don't do a, a, a classical presentation. 
uh, the slides are only here because Marcin and myself, we both uh, brought some own pictures, yeah, some some real pictures. And as uh, Marcin already said, these are not you're not this greenwashing on on Instagram or on any channel. No, this is stuff that we really do. And uh, and to be honest, I just was looking for some older pictures too, so that you see it's not just it happened not just today or yesterday. So you will see when you look at the pictures, I looked a little bit different. Okay, so let's start when we talk about okay, clean. What are we both doing? Uh, for respecting Mother Earth, meaning what do we do? What do we what are we do? Sorry, what we are do, do, doing? <laughs> An amazing day today in Valencia. What are we doing on a daily basis uh, regarding uh, the garbage? And I, I I will start with with I guess with my first picture. I will start with the first slide. And on this first slide, you see uh, myself and my love on on a beach in Mallorca. Uh, a short uh, story, Mallorca, this beautiful island in, in, in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea in Spain, has been uh, my home base for the last 14 years. Uh, for the last 14 years, this was my home base, which I left end of March uh, to move full time in my motom. But what we did on the base, especially in winter time, is we, we went, we walked down to the beach. Uh, we always had dogs. Um, we always did our dog walks. And we always did... Uh, beach cleaning they said we we brought a bag and we just cleaned the beach from rubbish from plastics or even you know smaller stuff in black in 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 the bags and you also can see on the right side it's a larger stuff i guess it's a broken uh standard battle or something that it was i don't remember it's a few years ago already so we so did this it is on, on, on... a garbage because i thought sorry i i thought this is like a bench or something no, no, this is garbage. This is a huge plastic uh, part of, 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 of a small border. I, I don't remember. It was a few years ago, which we found on the Amazing. beach. And, and we, I carried it up there and, and, and brought it to a station where you can bring the garbage. So we found a lot of stuff, small things, huge ones. And so what we did is we did it by ourselves. When we had a dog walk on the beach, we just brought it back and picked the stuff up. But we also organized beach cleanings um, on Facebook. So on our Facebook sites, uh, we, we encouraged friends that are on the island or tourists or whatever, join us for a few hours. Uh, let's meet, let's connect, let's clean the beach uh, and then have a drink together or something and, and, and do some networking or whatever. So we did this regularly and it was really a lot of fun because you, you really do an impact. And it's not a lot of work, you know, you're out in nature. Uh, it's also good exercise, you know, you're just bending down, so it's good for your back. Uh, or uh, you go down in the knees when you have back issues, but it's 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 a very nice stuff. So I really encourage you, maybe you're not on a beach, maybe you live uh, outside of a city when you do a walk, you know, um, when you do a walk with your beloved ones, or maybe you have a dog and do a dog walk, bring a, bring a bag and just uh, grab some garbage. The, the point is what I learned is it's not only that you don't throw away your garbage, you know? When you drive your car, you don't, I don't know, out of the uh, sick packets or cans of Coca-Cola or whatever. It's not only about throwing your garbage away when you on the road or when you walk somewhere, but it's also about not complaining that somebody else did it. Just bend down and collect it. Why not? Even it's not it's not your garbage, doesn't matter. Be, become a role model. Don't complain uh, if you want to have a nice, I don't know, beach or a nice uh, lakeside or a nice bath in, 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 in the neighborhood you're walking and it's not that clean, well, why not organize some friends and clean it up? Why not? Okay, you know, that's what is uh, sufficient. So, yeah, please. Yeah, I, I think I will, I will try to be, um, you know, a Tony of a devil here because um, I can almost hear some of our listeners saying, uh, why should I pick up some other people's garbage? And the second, uh, well, if I will be still picking it up, they will not stop littering. So is it not pointless? No, absolutely not. Because, you know, it's all, it's all about the small thing. It's becoming a role model. And and as I said it before, it's, it's, but it's really bad when you draw stuff away, when you don't think about it, what you're doing to nature. It's bad, yes. But I think it's also bad when somebody else throws it away and you're just complaining and not bending down and 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 and, and grab it. So that that that's that's my that's my belief and that's why we do this. 
Uh, you, we always can complain about uh, who is responsible for this, who is responsible for that. Yes, but does it does it matter? Does it change everything? No. If I want to have a clean beach, I bend down and and bring and, and bring the stuff uh, where it, it belongs. But uh, you have, some yeah. people think like that. Yes, absolutely. But it just starts, you know. Make a start. I mean, with everybody says no, nothing happens. But if a few start, and maybe somebody else sees this and joins you, and, and it's it's all about doing the first step. Every journey starts with the first step. Yeah, I just imagined how would it be if uh, at least half of the visitors would be carrying those bags with them? Then probably our beaches would be just you know, clean, cleaner, our forests, our meadows, and, and uh, I don't know, some places in the city as well. And also I thought about, uh, because you use the word um, role model a lot, I think it is uh, it would be embarrassing for me if I would notice that I dropped something, you know, on the walk or on the sidewalk or uh, on, the, on the sand or whatever, and somebody else would pick it up. I don't know how about you, but I would certainly yeah. feel embarrassed. And next time, probably I would do this myself. Yeah, Thank you absolutely. for that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And you know, it, it it starts with the mindset, and then it becomes an attitude. Yeah, all about. It. Yeah, absolutely. And and uh, friends of us, they organized. Uh, they only collected a cigarette. You know, the rest of the cigarettes, hundred thousand that they call. I don't know how they counted it. Hundred thousand of of the cigarette stubs uh, from the beach too. Okay, um, yeah, and then it's also about our, uh, yeah, taking care about plastic, glass, uh, machine. Yeah, That's I'm a... laughing because, uh, you know, uh, I myself feel almost uh, intimidated by your first example, and you, you just raised the bar so high, uh, cleaning, you know, those uh, seasides. And I thought uh, maybe for some of the people that are listening, uh, even the smallest thing would uh, can contribute, you know, uh, for example, just caring enough to be informed what kind of garbage should go where. And here you can see just uh, the outside of my house. Uh, these are uh, different containers. Um, and when I moved here, there were actually only two containers. So it was almost impossible uh, for the garbage uh, operators to pick it up uh just the right kind of, of the of the of the garbage and what what we did with my wife we decided to have uh, from our own money uh, to fund uh, additional containers and i know it's like more plastic but here it serves a purpose right and this kind of a container will last for ages probably and for sure it would last for our lifetime so this is our way to contributing uh, to uh, you know cleaning planet so we at, at least care enough to uh, be organized enough uh, to uh, throw things where where they really belong so i don't i know that these rules can be different for different regions so it is important for you to just uh, get a leaflet or something from your local uh, garbage operator to know exactly what kind of uh, things you can put in the right color of the bin. So yeah, that would be that like a very small version of what you Roland said um, a second ago. And I believe that on the next um, picture can, we can see just a second, just yeah. a second, Marcin. But I, yeah, it's a small, but it's it's a good start, you know, because. Um... When when we did discuss about plastic, yes or no, cans or glass, what is better, or the use as a container. I mean, we not always can. Um, sometimes we just have plastic. It's more convenient. It's cheap in the production. Um, you know, it's it's a good container. Why not to use it? The point is, most of the stuff is recyclable. So if you use it, well, of course, try to avoid it. But sometimes it's not really possible to avoid it. Then just recycle it. Why not? Why not? Uh, of course, first step is avoiding. Secondly, is uh, recycling it. I, I, I had to smile when I saw this picture. You know what? Uh, many years ago, a friend of mine, actually, she passed away, a very famous doctor, and we, we did a lot of lectures together, actually, on, on nutrition. She was very famous in Europe. And she showed a picture also with this uh, recycling containers. And there was one picture. There was a picture of, of a guy there. And I said, what's that? And I said, yeah, you know, for housewives, they can, they can recycle their husband. 
<laughs> okay. Very have a dark, look at... Roland. Very dark. <laughs> <laughs> have a look at the next slide. Composting. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I think it is linked somehow to what you just said. <laughs> so just to clarify, especially for the people that are just listening to our uh, podcast, uh, we are looking at the very old um, compost made of some of some wood, let's say. And I'm very young. Uh, I'm freshman in composting business, and I know that composting is like an art. And the compost is a living thing. So exactly, it is actually a composition of uh, various different um, species of uh, microorganisms that are able to uh, actually um, chew in and um, digest all of the organic matter. And the good proportions are needed in order to for your compost to be healthy and uh, and happy. So I just started two years ago. So it's not very big but i'm uh, composting every organic uh, things from my, my house, household and from my garden so when i'm cleaning weeds uh, they are also going in here and it is amazing uh, one year it was well last year in september uh, we had those pumpkins and their leaves are very very big and after harvesting uh, i tried to get rid of all of those you know uh, leaves and and uh, and uh, sticks from from these plants and they fill in whole container that you can see and just a few days ago few days after they completely disappeared like a magic they just uh, were integrated with the composting matter inside the bin and uh, from it i obtain um, organic uh, fertilizer that I'm using in my greenhouse that you will see uh, in the future. And the last thing that I wish to say about composting, actually, even if you are living inside a city, you still can have your own compost. If you have, um, I don't know, outside of the, your window or maybe in your balcony, uh, you can use like an old pot and throw organic matter there. Uh, you will find a lot of uh, useful uh, tips for that in the net. But uh, yes, thanks to that, you can uh, minimize the amount of waste that you are giving outside of your household. So uh, definitely worth a try. And it doesn't smell. If the compost is healthy, it smells fantastic. Absolutely. I can absolutely uh, rate to that because I did, we did composting in Mallorca. And when I'm going to settle down again after my traveling, I want to go in permaculture uh, and and actually composting will be very, very important. So no, you know, not to, to avoid totally virtualizers and all this stuff. Uh, and I guess for sure we will bring an extra show just on composting because as you said, it's it's really easy when you know how to do it. And secondly, everyone can do it. It doesn't matter if you're a large garden or just a balcony. Uh, when you plant your tomatoes, your herbs, you can do your own composting. And then your fruits or herbs or wedges are really, 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 really growing very well. I'm a huge fan of it. And to be honest, um, um, a friend of mine, uh, he, he's very into composting and he, really his fruits and his wedges, they're growing like crazy. What he does, besides composting, he has chicken. So that, as he told me, the chicken piece is very good. But he also has straw, you know, the straw quartz outside. Yeah. And um, the guys are peeing on it. So when they get to the toilet, uh, they don't uh, flush the toilet. They go outside the garden, they pee on the straw. It's not smelling at all when you don't mix it with the other stuff. And he said, it's a perfect compost tool. Sounds a little bit weird, but it's nature, little gentlemen. We just talk about natural things that has been natural for thousands of years. Some of us or most of us just forgot it. Okay. So summer, I should summarize cleaning. Okay. First of all, if possible, avoid garbage where it's possible, like glass or, for example, plastic, of course, or cans. Uh, even glasses. Some people say, okay, glass, uh, crystal is, is better bottle than than um, plastic. Not at all. To be honest, to produce a glass bottle, you need much more energy. So the footprint, the, the, the carb footprint is much larger, first of all. And secondly, um, if you bring it back to, for example, to the supermarket where you... you 
get him some money back. Uh, a friend of mine who, who runs a huge company on this, he told me they need, I don't know, sorry guys, how many gallons this are, but in Europe, it's 60 liters of clean drinking water you use for one bottle to clean because they have to clean it on high standard because the company doesn't know what somebody put in a, a cigarette who's very toxic or, a, or, or, or oil or whatever. So it's also not really very good using glass. But anyway, so first of all, avoid it. Secondly, it's to be realistic, it's not always possible, of course. Then please, please recycle. And the last step is, okay, don't throw stuff in nature. Don't throw stuff out of the car window or wherever. Please use the baskets for there. And if you see other ones doing, talk to them or maybe organize a cleaning in the beach, in the forest, or in the lakeside, whatever. Okay, that's about what Marcin and I do uh, with our beloved ones. Let's go to the next topic. This is about a very important, it's about energy, power, responsibility, which is also a huge topic. Uh, using less power or losing less uh, power that pollutes Mother Earth. Yeah, of course, we need power for different stuff. Yeah, for sure. The question is, how do we use it and what kind of use it are the alternatives? And we both are also bringing here some examples. Let me start with my first picture. Uh, this is just a picture I made uh, five months ago uh, from, the, from, the, from the window of a friend's apartment when I parked in front of his house. So as I, as I told you guys, I'm, I live and work remotely from my motor home. I travel through Europe. Right now I'm in Spain. And of course, yes, it's a, the motorhome, of course, needs gasoline to drive. Yes, for sure. But I already told it in another interview, another show. I only drive when it's necessary. So meaning when I'm, I'm, I'm traveling, but I don't drive to go to the supermarket or doing my, my, my laundry. I walk there. Yeah? If sometimes half an hour or an hour with, with bags doesn't matter. So... I only drive it when I want to go longer distance because I want to move to somewhere else. But I don't use it when I stay longer for a few days or a week. I have to do my laundry or I, I, I want to go to the local market to buy food or whatever. Uh, I don't use it. I don't start the machine. I even don't have a, a scooter with me or a roller with me or e-bike or whatever. I walk. So that's one point. But the second point is... I am totally self-sufficient remote. That's why I brought this picture. You see, we have eight solar panels, so quite a lot of energy I can produce, a lot of electricity I can produce with a lot of batteries to store. So I'm, I'm 100% self-sufficient. I don't need to plug in somewhere. I don't have to burn gasoline to produce electricity or, or whatever, or gas, whatever. I'm 100% self-sufficient by nature, by the sun so everybody can do a little bit of course even when you're in a motorhome you can do it um it's a little bit oversized the reason for that is as i said i, I will settle down in the next one and a half two years i don't know exactly uh find a, a nice piece of land somewhere in europe do permaculture and maybe that's an old house so we have to renovate it and in the meantime i can live but also for the house i can later use the energy from the roof of my motorhome so there are all many, many options. And I know that you are settled down, my dear friend, in a nice area. And you also did some constructions. I, I, just briefly, tell us a little bit about the coming pictures. Yeah, so uh, actually, this picture, uh, what you can see is my basement. And this big hole in one of the walls um, are the, the one through this big um, heat center came in, let's say. And uh, yeah, we settled here. Uh, it is like a very old, uh, almost, yeah, exactly 100 years old house. And uh, previously, and it's quite large, mm -hmm. and previously it was heated through um, like a separate um, furnaces in each of the rooms. So uh, my dad did like a renovation of it. And uh, we have... Uh, uh, central power source operating on coal and what we are doing now what you can see here this very large container uh, it's a buffer so it contains uh, a lot of hot water prepared by this stove that operates on wood and uh, through every possible source source of energy in my climate i need to be warmed up because uh, the temperatures drops uh, substantially during winter 
And um, yeah, so the most ecological one for this uh, setup, for this um, area, uh, is uh, using wood, because wood produces only the amount of uh, CO2 as the tree absorbed during the years. So, um, and it is not uh, like an ordinary uh, furnace, ordinary stove, uh, it uses gasification. It is quite uh, complicated and, and I'm not able to explain it fully. Uh, what I know is that it first uh, uses a gas produced by uh, wood and only after that it burns the wood itself. So it produces twice as much energy with the same uh, fuel. And by using this buffer, uh, I'm safe because I need to fire my, my stove just one or, or twice in a week. And in the meantime, this big uh, container of hot water will be enough to heat my entire house. So this is something that is going on. Uh, but uh, if you want to uh, breach to your situation and you are living in a flat, for example, you may, for example, tr try to control the temperature uh, that you're using. And do you really need to be as hot uh, with, uh, with your rooms? Or maybe you will um, be even healthier if you just turn your thermostat down a few notches. So that's from me. Absolutely. And, and, and to be honest, Marcin, it looks amazing, you know, it, 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 it's, it's a different energy, uh, it's a different warm, it feels differently, the warmth, and you can see the fire. Uh, I, I love it. Yeah, I love fire. From the young age, uh, <laughs> my mother used to have, like, a, a lot of troubles because of me. I Once I almost fired the entire house. Uh, I love fire so much. So uh, that is why I'm showing you uh, my fireplace as well and even though i have this central uh, heat power in my house um, when days are really really cold i do not want to use the energy of the whole system in order to make just one room a little bit uh, warmer and that is when uh, we use this lovely fireplace just um, throwing in like one or two pieces of wood but what i am showing you on this picture is actually a birch Bark is a hard word to pronounce. So uh, pronounce. So it's a beech bark that I'm using uh, as a natural uh, starter for a fire. If you have a fireplace uh, and you're using wood, probably you know you can buy in a supermarket those different kinds of uh, artificial fire starters. Uh, they are usually contain some kind of uh, gasoline or, uh, I don't know, uh, some uh, wax or something uh, which creates these um, nasty fumes. So I'm just using uh, a bark of a very certain kind of tree, which I know is uh, pretty easily flammable. And uh, I have some spur um, beach in, in containers and I'm using just that works very very well if you ever be lost in a forest and uh, need to warm yourself up i would strongly recommend you uh, this beach buck if you know those white trees uh, this is beach and I, I must say i love it you know because um and, and, and ladies and gentlemen if you have the chance to have a chimney or just to set in an oven like this and, and burn fire uh, it's a different energy. It's 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 yeah, and it, it smells good, and and it. I also I also love the sound when when it, when 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 the when the when the wood mm -hmm. is burning, and I know also for motors. Mine one is is is, is unfortunately uh, want to say a, a, a new one, so it's a lot of uh, it's a lot of synthetic inside. To be honest, uh, so it was not possible to burn one. But I know some friends who have uh, old school buses and converted them to motorhomes. They brought a, a fire a place like this. They also have a chimney, so it's working everywhere. And if it's possible for you guys, go for that. It's natural. It smells good. It burns good. It gives heat, and it looks good. Absolutely. So let's have a look at the next picture. I, I'm very curious what you're talking about. The next picture. What's that, my friend? <laughs> Yes, so for you guys who are just listening, uh, you can see some kind of uh, entrance in the garden and a dog. This is one of my dogs, uh, but it is not about uh, him. Uh, I just wanted to show you that uh, because I have a quite a large 
garden uh, what I'm using for uh, lighting uh, is only um, sun powered so uh, I'm not using the electri electricity uh, from the grid in order to uh, light up my garden during evenings or nights I'm just using those uh, solar powered little uh, LED lamps uh, they produce uh, just the exact amount of lighting that is needed during the night. So I just wanted to show you that uh, sometimes you can use those nasty plastic things in order to avoid uh, more costs for the planet. That's my position at least. You you can disagree. Absolutely, absolutely. I, lo I love to do. I love to. Do. I you know um, um, outside of my caravan, I have a a, a huge a huge marquise, quite long mm -hmm. uh, and quite wide. And sometimes I really like it a bit, a bit romantic. I have a lot of lights outside, and the light mm -hmm. comes also from the sun energy. Okay, guys, before we come to the uh, to the next topic, our uh, food, uh, let's summarize it shortly. Energy. So, if ever possible, use solar panels. Use solar panels for electricity or for heating, or maybe you have a, a pool. You can also heat uh, with solar panel the, the pool water, or uh, you can light your garden up. Uh, whatever it is, so use solar panels as much as possible. I, we don't, we didn't show here electric car. There's a reason because Marcin and myself, we don't have an electric car. And to be honest, my my, I, I will never have one uh, because uh, electric cars to produce the batteries is more polluting the environment. And I don't know how many miles, but, but uh, there is some research on that in, in because, it, you know, especially in Europe, there are many uh, car manufacturers, especially in Germany. And the production of these batteries for cars pollute the, the environment as hard as when you're driving 200,000 miles in a gasoline burning car. So it's not really saving the planet. Yeah, when you ride it, yes, but not before you see it, not before you pick the car up at the dealers. It's already wasted, uh, really polluted the environment totally. So that's why we both don't, or my from myself, I don't absolutely don't recommend an electric car. Uh, yes, it's nice uh, to use it with electricity. The question is, where does, does the electricity come from? Yes, I mean, when you just plug in and, and, and you're the uh, supplier, uh, is burning coal or whatever to, to bring it listen it doesn't make sense at all so this is just greenwashing so that's why we don't show electric cars okay so, so let's come to the is it true yeah I yeah I, I would want uh, just to comment on that because uh, it is like against uh, this common sense right because uh, we can see an electric car it's like it's silent uh, it uh, does not produce any fumes so we think yeah maybe it is. Uh, a better solution and it would be yeah it is in, in, interesting from the larger point of view because if we would have electric cars uh, that have batteries uh, operating on uh, not on the certain chemicals but maybe on something else there are batteries created from a seawater for example so if the batteries uh, will be better and if we make sure that all the energy that we are using to power up those cars uh, comes from uh, eco-friendly um, sources like a wind or a sun or water or whatever uh, then it would be a very nice solution right roland so if the situation would be like i just described then probably you would have a very good fun just riding an e-car right absolutely absolutely when technology is changing and it's, and it's really really makes sense yes i'm a, i would be a fan of it but right now not of all it's just greenwashing absolutely hmm. okay let's go to the last topic that has a really big big impact on the environment and um, absolutely wanna. And it's about eating mindfully. It's about food. And I, I'm an absolute fan of this because I really dig very deep to it. Uh, I just mentioned it before. I, When I'm going to settle down, I will grow my own stuff again. And we go more on permaculture because I know that food has an amazing carbon bit, uh, um, footprint. Uh, like, I don't know, when you, you know, whatever you, uh, it's not about diets, you know, if you're a meat eater or vegan or, or vegetarian, or whatever, I, I don't care about this, that's your private stuff. But think about it, where does the, the, the things come from? Where does your meat come from? 
I, I, I have to be honest, I'm a meat eater, to be honest. I'm a meat eater, but but I don't go to the supermarket. I only buy it at local dealers. I only buy, I eat grass-fed beef, so uh, cows that are there whole year outside, eat only eating grass, no imported grains or soya beans from, I don't know, from Brazil, where they burn uh, the jungle and, and transport it a long way. Uh, I don't I don't have to eat uh, strawberries in winter, which are imported, or grapes from South Africa that will come a long way. This doesn't make sense. So we are talking about mindfully eating. It's not only about not eating animals, it's more about taking care about the environment. And yeah, I love I love your first picture, Marcin. It's from your home. Yes, thank you. For me, uh, I'm very proud of it. Oh, um, oh, but if you are a gardener, probably you will see that uh, this greenhouse is not yet operated properly. So uh, for you guys just listening, uh, you can see just inside of my greenhouse with some tomatoes. And um, yeah, I started it two years ago. I've built it uh, together with the husband of my sister. And um, we are using only natural fertilizers uh, that we can obtain from the composting, for example. And this is our second season. So uh, the previous season, season we planted too many, uh, too many plants there. So it was like a jungle <laughs> with the uh, tomatoes. And also I've made a mistake because I've used as you probably know, if you are growing tomatoes, you need to use those um, strings in order to hang the plant to some structure. And I've used uh, plastic strings. And then um, after the season, when I had to compost it, I had to manually remove every you know, uh, piece from that. And this year I'm using only natural strings. So when the time comes and I will compost it, I will just throw everything uh, into the compost so easy peasy for me and also it is better for the environment i love that i love that makes absolutely sense absolutely sense i love that cool and uh, uh, marcin when you have so uh, mostly when, when when you when you grow greens or tomatoes or cucumbers whatever mostly they, uh, they mature all at the same time or uh, what are you, you eating them all or you make some sauce for the winter or what are you doing mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for that question. It is quite important. Uh, that's why uh, I regret that last year we planted too many plants because the amount of tomatoes, it was like a you know, tsunami of tomatoes. And even though I have a large family, yet we weren't able to eat it all. Uh, so we just made some products out of it, like um, paso, I don't know how to properly translate it, these sauces out of tomatoes, we love tomatoes. And this year we planted uh, just a few, uh, but yet um, if they are planted in the right order, they will uh, mature in this order as well. So some of them will mature earlier, some of them will mature later on, and then we can uh, share it with our family and uh, and eat it all. Yeah, yummy. Very, very good. So and if you don't have a, a, a very, uh, if you don't have a garden at all, or if you don't have a garden where you can grow like stuff, um, there's another option I want to show you. This is one of my square foot gardenings. Uh, actually, I used them uh, before I had a bent house, so on, on, on top. So there was no soil. I had no garden. So I was growing my my greens, my salads, my herbs, um, whatever, in different. I had this was just one of it. I had many of them. A friend of mine helped me to make them. So we, we went to a market, uh, bought some wood and, 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 and assembled it together. And it's it's called Square Foot Gardening. So if you're into it, Google Square Foot Garden. There's a guy who brought an amazing book out. I learned a lot from him. And the 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 the, the thing is, it's, it's always a square, uh, square foot. So you can operate from each side. It's easy to handle. And yeah, I love it. And afterwards, I brought them to the Finca in Mallorca because there I had two two challenges. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to Mallorca. Mallorca is an island that's very, very rocky. Very, very, very rocky. So when you get, when you get uh, some land, you really have to get rid of all the stones. That's the reason why you have so many stone stone walls there, because there's so many stones. It's a lot of work. And it's difficult to grow. And um, it's not always uh, enough rain um, and stuff like that. And we had... We had a, a huge property, 55 hectares. We had thousands of rabbits. So I also used, I brought this from the, from the penthouse. I also used 
uh, and you can see the stone wall in the, in, in the back. I also use this on the Finca to grow our own fruits and wedges and legumes and herbs. We did this altar and I really loved it. But we also had the problem that we, like, like you said, Marcin, that we, we really harvested a lot at the same time. Uh, this is an example. Um, we had a lot of fig trees, two types of fig trees, the, the, the green yellow ones and, and the blue ones. And um, in Mallorca, you harvest them in summer, and we had six trees, and you harvest a lot of them, and you can't eat them all at all. So what we did is, for example, we made a lot of jam. We have a special receipt. We do jam with really a little bit with ginger and, and different other stuff, and really, really make. And we loved it. My girlfriend and I, we just loved it. Uh, I started. I, I showed it how to do this, and and she jumped in because I always love to do making my own marmalades. I always did it when I was a student. Um, and we also, when we have too many tomatoes, we made tomato sauce and, and different, different stuff. Uh, for winter, of course, uh, the tomato sauce we always used, not the marmalade, we had so much <laughs> fake marmalade. But what we did is uh, we brought it to friends, you know, um, a very good uh, friends of ours who lived a few miles away on a finca. They, did, they didn't have figs, but they had a lot of oranges and, and lemons. We too, but they had even more. So they gave us lemons and we could make an amazing limoncello uh this nice italian liquor and and they also they for example produced our sea salt with different flavors with lime flavors with orange flavors so we brought them the the, the fig gems they gave us uh different different flavored naturally flavored salt sea salt so it was about you know sharing with with neighbors with friends do those and this and so. so if you have a large garden and you have a lot of stuff to harvest yeah, share it with friends. I guess everyone is happy when he or she gets natural products. It's also a nice a present, you know. I mean, it's easy, you know, to go to the supermarket and buy something, or you you bring something that you made, and maybe you, you know, you design it uh, lovely or nicely, and you write something on. I always love gifts like that, and I also I also love to give away presents like this when I'm here. even here in my motorhome, home. You know, when I'm traveling for train, I bought a lot of marmalade, uh, which I produce with my auntie in april in may in austria from different uh berries i brought it here in my motorhome and then uh, i meet somebody who helps me out with something or i, I give it as, as a small percent and, and people really 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 love it so yeah grow and as we said before on a garden on a farm on a balcony on a roof terrace or inside whatever you want marcin your slide yeah. Yeah, I'm. I'm just. Uh, you make me so uh, hungry right now. So I'm just <laughs> thinking about this pig marmalade all the time. So I hope I will. I will try it someday. And uh, what you can see here is something that I'm particularly very proud of, and also a little bit emotional because you can see a very old apple tree that um, actually was ordered to be cut down. And uh, I stood in. I said because it was having no apples for uh, like a year or two. I said, no way, because this um, this is a tree that I remember from my um, early days and I wanted to keep it. And I built a special wall for its roots to have more water. And these are the apples that we just harvested this year. So uh, it is also important to keep those old species of um, uh, trees uh, because uh, now, um, we are losing some of those species, right? Some of those types and the new apples are, you know, the taste is a little bit different. And also those old kinds of uh, species are more um, resist resistible, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to to pests and, and to environment. So you do not need to use any pesticides. So that's it. So, what's that, Marcin? The last picture before we wrap it up. What's that? <laughs> Maybe we can create like a um, contest for our listeners to guess what could it be with the answers gathered for the next show. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, uh, please, when you are inspired by our show, uh, go on, uh, send us an email. It's about contact at respectmotherearth.com uh, to be honest the, the website is under construction uh the web uh master told me that it should be ready for the next show so but the email address is online uh, it's contact at respectmotherearth.com write us what you believe that this is and then we we have a winner and why is it show. there 
And why is it there? Yeah. Why is it there and what is it? And when you are inspired um, by something, let us know. Is it about doing more about, I don't know, recycling or avoiding even uh, plastic or whatever? Or maybe you go out and, and clean your, your neighborhood. It's nice. What are you doing in the future about the food uh, uh, imprint or about your energy? Anything you want to add, my, my dear friend, before we close? Uh, yeah, I'm just very happy that we shared all of those things. I was a little bit nervous at the beginning to show you uh, my basement, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But uh, at the end, it turned out uh, fantastic. And I just hope that everyone listening to that can find at least one action that you can do in your environment, in your household. Uh, and after that, you can imagine that uh, Mother Earth is just smiling to you. And that's what I wish. Thank you, Masin. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks a lot. Uh, if you're inspired, take action. Let us know what it is. Maybe you, we can bring your story here on USA Global TV and radio. Uh, yeah, thank you. We have a, a comment. Super impressive and inspiring. Thank you both. Thank you so much for your comment. And, yeah, guys, let us know what you are doing on a daily basis. Uh, please contact us. As I said, contact at respectmotherearth.com. Maybe you have a topic you want to discuss. We bring more topics on. Uh, we will also invite uh, different interview partners who are specialized in permaculture, in composting, uh, whatever. So uh, keep tuned. And by the way, also please go at usaglobaltv.com. Maybe you want to book a show. You can book a show there for free. And you will see that there are many, many other good shows because USA Global TV is not a normal mainstream TV uh, broadcaster. We are here about caring and sharing and connecting. Thanks a lot. See you in two weeks. Same time, same station. Stay tuned. Thank you so much. And bye-bye. Bye-bye, Marcin. Bye-bye, my friend. Thank you, Roland. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.